So we have this wonderful MR2 to diagnose. It uh, doesn't start. He had had a timing issue. So he took it to a shop and they fixed the timing issue. I'm not exactly sure what they did or they reset the timing, they adjusted it, something like that. And he drove it home. Once he got home from the shop, he popped the hood because he noticed a lot of heat or felt a lot of heat. The exhaust manifold was glowing. And so he decided to look at it and somehow he diagnosed that the wastegate wasn't opening on the turbo. And so he bought a new turbo and put the turbo on. Now it doesn't start. So I'm not sure if he did something wrong or if it was just something that happened. But I'm charging the battery because I don't want to trust it. I don't think Fred knew where the hood pop is. Well, I guess we'll call it the bonnet because that's the frunk and whatever. Um, no stick. No stick. All right, I'm going to grab a stick and then we're going to see if we can notice anything visually before we do anything. If I can't notice anything visually, we're going to try starting it, see what happens, and then go from there. All right, so essentially, either he did something when he took the turbo off and replaced it, or something completely different happened, which is always a possibility. So essentially, we're just going to look around his area where he would have been working. Make sure nothing weird is happening or going on. So we're going to test if it turns over. I just wanted to look at it to see if there's anything obvious that I find. And then if I can't find anything obvious or, you know, any other stuff, we're going to try turning it over. Even if I find something obvious, we're still going to try turning it over because I want to see if it starts. Once we turn it over, we'll have an idea of how it sounds, what it's kind of doing, if it's spitting and sputtering, if all it does is crank. And then it gives us a better idea to look at because if it just sits there and cranks, then, all right, does spark work? Um, are we getting fuel? Um, is, you know, it's the other thing too, if it doesn't, if it doesn't do much, um, you know, is the intercooler piping, everything like that, um, solid? So we have to, you know, we might smoke it and see if there's a hose somewhere that's leaking because these things are very temperamental, being an OBD1 car. So that's a ground. All right, I found one connector disconnected. Not exactly sure what this is, but it would be nice to find the other end. Well, that has both plugs pl or both things plugged in. Oh, it actually is down there? It's right here. Yeah, see? I thought you told me it didn't have an igniter, dude. I said the distributor doesn't have one. So where does that igniter go to? It goes to this coil. To the distributor? Oh, look, that's not really plugged in, is it, dude? It's technically broken, but it's most of the way on. Oh. This might, I don't know, it might be used, it might not be used. I can't find anything. Because this is a JDM engine. Okay, well, I don't, I don't see anything that's other than that connector being disconnected, which literally could be that it's a JDM engine. Well, yeah, because this, the JDM engine is non VTEC and the USDM one is VTEC, so there's no VTEC wire. I don't know. Like the gas might be bad. What's that noise? There's like something like rattling when it turns off. You hear that? Again? Uh, that sounds like it's going from the starter. Okay. Well, do you want to try some fuel? Where's brake clean? Spray? Where's some brake clean? So we're going to try to 
spray some brake cleaning and see if it starts. And I pulled this hose off, which, you know, doesn't look great, but it's also torn. So that's a vacuum leak and mass airflow sensor cars are terrible with vacuum leaks, even though this one does have a map. Don't get me wrong, it has a map, but because it looks for this the most when it's cold. Okay. Ow, what the fuck? I'm guessing it's a fuel issue. There's no pressure building up. What do we have? All right, so it's definitely coming out of this thing. You sure it's not lower? Let me get the light. Some light? Yeah, oh, no, it's definitely, definitely that <laughs> thing. Definitely that thing. Get up in there. Show, show the viewers. I don't know how well you can see that smoke coming out, but yeah, that's pretty good. So we're gonna tape up this hose and it's gonna run. Well, I wanna let the Oh, that's the intake. Yep, so it I'll should smoke out of there. Yep. I don't think it should smoke out of there. After the math. No. It's smoking out of there. Okay. Oh, that's loose. Well, that would be a problem. Okay. This clamp should probably be there. I say we start with fixing that and that and then... Uh, Smoke it again. Yeah, I'm thinking about... Um, There's also like a little vacuum dash pot thingy down there that... Or that's the wastegate. Yeah. So the other thing I'm thinking about is oh, taking... Oh, the clamp isn't on that right there. The wastegate? Yeah, look at it. Right here? That one, yeah. Oh, no, it's not. All right. So... That, that, and that for now. And then we'll smoke it again because... There's so much smoke coming out, it's hard to tell. Yeah. Well, there wasn't any more smoke being pushed in there, but yeah. It needs clamps. That one does? Yeah, that oh. one's much smaller. Well, that's the problem. Um, Do we have a little clamp or something? We don't have an extra clamp that you took off the uh, fuel hose on that Firebird? Probably. I mean, that one I left the two of them on, but... We don't have a vintage 1969 worm clamp to put on this? We need a period correct clamp. Oh, okay. I'll get a 1991 Where's worm my clamp. long needle nose? <laughs> kind of see why he uh, didn't put this one on. All right, make it not leak, Brandon. Fred, can you go get the 45 degree long needle nose? Are they in the toolbox again? Or are they gone forever? Um, no, they should be in the toolbox. I saw them. They're, they're it's only one or the other, dude. There is no in-between. Gone forever or in the toolbox? All right, we're going to see if uh, fixing that one hose did anything and also tightening the uh, clamp for the math. And we put the clamp on the wastegate where it should be. Ready? Yep. Hasn't really changed. All right. All right, what now, this? Yeah, pump that in there. Like way down in there? Well, no, just so that it'll seal, because we want to get this hose too. So have it. Uh, this, uh, look at how big, that's a hot dog it. in the hallway, dude. Pump it. It's going to explode. That'll make for great content. If we blow up our tester? Yeah. Look at it, dude. Keep going, it's almost there. There. So Look at that. Dude. She can I really liked this tool. It's diagged so many things. And now it's going to be broken. <laughs> and we're never going to get to use it because all our tools are broken. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Yo, holy... Wait, what the fuck? Okay, so that's... Let's tighten that up. Yo, tighten it. <laughs> tighten it up, dude. Is that a 10? Yeah, probably. Here. I got one. Oh, okay. Put it where I'm looking. That's a pretty big leak. Yeah, I'd say. 
<laughs> Look at it. Is the throttle body leaking, or is that it's, just a clamp on? No, the it's head? coming from underneath. Is that the uh, in idle air control valve, or is that that's this thing right here, which does go to the throttle body? But that's a pretty big leak. Yeah, you might need to take that off, dude. Here, tell me if you see where it's coming from. I think it's on this side. It might be this little thingy so on the Let me side. See. Get this. There's a thingy mabob right here with two bolts. Let me try to tighten the thingy mabob. Okay. I'll I try need to the tighten the thingy mabob. You need an eight? No, it's Phillips it's heads. Phillips. Oh, okay. It's a number two Phillips, dude. Ooh, what's, what's, like what's still over here? That, it might be, dude. Like what? But I'm gonna try what's it. that line that? You see the hard line that's behind it? Oh shit. Oh, it's. <laughs> It's loose on the turbo, too. <laughs> Let me get a, a big extension. I don't think it's actually pushed on the turbo enough. Yeah, it's leaking from down there. How much vacuum could an MR2 leak if a vacuum leak MR2, MR2 could leak vacuum? <laughs> Did it pass the oh, yo, this one, too. Which yeah. one? This okay. clamp. This clamp. <laughs> okay, okay. We're, we're gonna chalk it up to uh, it was late at night and he was done in his driveway. I think it's coming from down there though. I think that one on the throttle body looks the most violent. What's shoot? It's shooting out right there. You see that? Oh, I literally I just got to this intake here. I'm gonna turn this off real quick. This yeah, is dude. getting really bad. I'm about to pass out. Hot box. Yeah. Oh, there we go. That we're, went all the way We're vaping on. mineral spirits, dude. Sessions would be real. <laughs> the throttle body is probably going to have to come off. But before we do that, um, the turbo inlet is tight. We found a couple clamps over here that were loose. Um, I think you guys were talking about something under there, but we're yeah. just going to see if we have any more leaks now. Maybe it's like that 350Z. That wow, that literally the... just started pushing out. We're... Is this one loose? What? Maybe it's like that 350Z that had the uh, upside down throttle body gasket. Well, we have a lot of the uh, vacuum leaks hopefully fixed. We're gonna see if that did anything. Oh, I figured out what that clamping or that clicking is. Hmm. It's the math closing. Oh. So the math's bad. I'm just gonna spray some in this intake and then put this hose back on. Why is it so The gasket was on there and then someone RTV'd over said gasket. So I'm not sure. I mean, I know that shinery, it might be. But essentially what we decided was we're gonna take off the idler control valve on this and then see what we can do to clean up everything and reseal it. All right, so I got the uh, gasket for the idler control valve out of the freezer because it was too big, and this is a JDM engine, so everything that um, everything that I could find was a USDM one, and they have three openings, and this one only has two. <laughs> uh, it fits so much better after being frozen for overnight. All right, I'm actually going to put a little bit of RTV because we still don't know if that was actually leaking. So essentially, I'm using RTV in the in the place of proper gaskets because we're testing. And then it, once we know, okay, this is all good. This is all not having any issues. We got it running again. Then we can try to find the gaskets while it's running for the customer and then replace them once they're actually here.
I still don't believe that everything. One, I want to make sure that that is still that is sealed actually now. Um, and two, I don't think that's the end of our leaks. Yeah, it's that thing on the side, dude, with the two screws. It was leaking in between here, so we took it off to see what little springs and everything flew out. Nothing, it's just a magnet, I guess. There is no... I, I looked at the part number, there isn't one available. Um, Fred's pulling the spark plugs, which yeah, the fuel smells absolutely horrible. So we're gonna go get some uh, fuel at the gas station and put it in there. But I'm gonna test the math because I actually found where, what it's supposed to be at. So these ones, essentially it's like, so the only ones that are using this one are four, five, six, and seven. One, two, three, they don't use. And between four and five, it's supposed to be 200 to 400 ohms, 281. So there's that. And then um, between five and six, with the math fully closed or, you know, not any airflow or anything like that. It says between two and 600 ohms. So 240 something. And then let me try to open this thing, which is also weird because it says fully open is in between 20 and 100 and, or 1200 ohms. So that's a really odd thing. Can you uh, take it apart? Essentially apart poke this it. in there and move it while I'm ohming it and we'll just make sure that it moves. And as long as it moves while we're ohming it, then, I mean, it moves. And it even said when it's fully open, it should be anywhere between 20 and 1200 ohms. I'm gonna say it's okay. Are you? I think it's just. It's just shallow? Yeah. yeah. Let's see if there's any gas in this. Oh, there's some. There's definitely, oh, there's. Oh yeah, there's, there's gas. There's a lot of gas. We're just going to get rid of it, because... Oh, that's horrible. Now that there's new gas in there, we try it again, and these fuel pumps aren't supposed to turn on with the key. Like, you know, they're Hondas, and you turn the key on and it primes. This doesn't prime. It primes, or the fuel pump turns on when you're cranking it. So we cranked it a few times with the bad gas in there, didn't see any fuel. Cranked it a few times with the good gas, didn't see any fuel coming out. Over here, this is called the uh, diagnostic connector. So if you jump that wire, which is the battery positive, to that wire, that goes straight to the fuel pump, you should turn the fuel pump on. And so that's essentially how you would test fuel pressure is key on, hook up the fuel pressure line down there, that way you can see it, and then you jump these two, fuel pump will turn on, it'll tell you what pressure it's sitting at and all that other stuff. Nothing happens. So, I'm going to um, look at the fuse for this and see if we popped a fuse. And then if the fuse is good, I'm going to open up the center console. We're going to unplug it, ohm it, and depending on what we see with the ohms, we might have to drop the tank or not. Um, and if, the, if it ohms out fine, and if I can actually take battery voltage to the connector down there and get the pump to turn on, then something in the middle broke. So we're going to have to see with that, but I'm going to go check the uh, fuse and see what happens. No? Nope. No? Nah.
Well, uh, Tony got the fuel pump taken care of for us because, um, yeah, he, I don't know, it needs the battery charger or something. Battery died on us because it always does. But uh, we've been busy today. Um, Tony did the fuel pump for us, got it all in. We're gonna see if it works because now we have all the vacuum leaks taken care of. And now we should have fuel. And that should be it. Fingers crossed.